You're probably thinking of going to the party tonight. It's a great fun. Actually, it reminds me of my last party in my country, Iran. It was on the 8th of March, the Women's Day. And after coming back from the demonstration, I went to a party to celebrate this day with friends. You should know that drinking, dancing, having a party for women and men, both together at the same place in Iran, is forbidden. But everybody does it. So we had fun. <clears throat> but after a while, we were arrested by the police. We were taken to a prison for three days. And um, I was sentenced to 75 lashes and also a fine as a punishment. It was very scary. I was taken to a dark cell in a basement of a court. There was a man who was waiting for me with his belt. And there was also a bed. I was asked to lie down. And I also promised to not move. Otherwise, they would tie me up. He started smashing my back from my neck through my legs and was telling me how scandalous I was and was counting every hit. Many of the Iranian activists, journalists, bloggers, lawyers, workers, students, etc., who dare to share their thoughts against the regime are under the harsh tortures or sentenced to long-term prison or sentenced to death or executed or some were lucky enough to flee from the country. An Iranian blogger who tortured to death three years ago do you know a horrible situation was going on only a few months ago on the street? Some radicals were pouring acid on women's face just to remind them to be obedient. You may know that the political environment in Iran is very harsh for the people, and in particular, for the women of Iran the Iranian women, as well as demanding their rights and social justice. They are also demanding the equality, which they have been deprived of since the revolution of Iran in 1979. Many people who are opposed to the policies of the regime have joined the various social and, social and political campaigns which, as a result, put their life in danger. One of those campaigns named One Million Signatures Campaign and aimed to stop discriminatory laws against the Iranian women. And I also joined this campaign to stop the gender apartheid. Do you know that these days it's very difficult for the Iranian women to get divorced. Only a man has right to file for divorce. A friend of mine, who was a beautiful Kurdish girl, got married, and she was beaten by her husband. She had a horrible situation, and it took her five years to get a permission to divorce. Do you know that one man's testimony equals two women's testimony. If an accident happens right now for a woman and a man, and they both become disabled, according to the law, the money that they may receive for the damage for the woman is half of the money that the man may receive. You may know that covering the hair, which we call it hijab, is obligatory in Iran for the Iranian women, even for foreigners and for non-Muslims. 
recently an Iranian journalist created a blog which is named My Stealthy Freedom. Some people started sending their selfies without covering their hair. And after a short time, this simple action became as a great idea. Thousands of Iranians were sending their pictures, and they all had one message. They want to have a right to choose. Can you imagine today a feeling of a wind or, or rain through your hair can be a year biggest dream in a part of the world. So please do appreciate your freedom. It's not given to everyone and not everywhere in the world. Did you know that an Iranian lady cannot be a judge? One of the Iranian ladies, Shirin Abadi, who is a lawyer, an activist, and a former judge, she also awarded a Nobel Peace Prize, had to leave her country. So I, as an activist, had to leave my country, actually had to escape from my country, which was not easy for me, because I also had my normal life, my job, my family, my friends, and I had to leave everything. I was afraid, I was alone, and afraid of my unclear situation. I was going to the Netherlands, to a new country, without knowing anything about it, to ask for asylum. I remember my first day at the airport in Amsterdam. I was looking for help. And it's very funny, because I was scared of the police in my entire life. And by that time, I was looking for them to help me. So I went to the police station, and wow, a big, tall, black policeman came towards me. I was afraid and fell into tears. Do you know what did he do with me? He gave me a hug and told me, don't worry, you are safe here. We will help you. You must be tired. Would you like to eat something? Would you like to drink something? What a nice relief. I couldn't imagine that a policeman could be very nice. They started helping me immediately without knowing me. I was living there, and I started learning the language and making some nice friends, almost like a family. But after a while, I noticed that I would be deported to Poland. I didn't want to go to Poland because I didn't want to start everything from the beginning again. I started, I started talking to different lawyers, and they all told me that I shouldn't be worried because Poland is in the EU countries and the old regulation system is the same. So I would have the same right. I expected the same thing. I had no choice. I came to Poland, to Warsaw. And I noticed that, in fact, it was not the same. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Sorry for you. <laughs> you know, at the airport in Warsaw, the guards took my shoelaces off. So I was not able to walk with them fast. They started yelling at me. I was taken to a prison cell at the airport for three days. And for the first 24 hours, I was not given a glass of water. And then I was taken to a closed camp, which was almost the same as a jail. In this part of my journey, you know, I've learned how to be patient. Actually, I believe that. Although my beginning of, the beginning of my stay in Poland was very difficult and tough. I have very good, valuable experiences here. For example, I've been living here alone. I don't have any family here. But I was so lucky to find very nice friends, which helps me to 
feel optimistic about my, about my future. I've been learning languages, English, Polish. I didn't know any English when I came here. But I've, unfortunately, I found Polish very hard for me. But somehow I started saying things in Polish and making short conversations and also doing shopping in Polish. So recently I went to a grocery shop to buy something. But first, I made sure that I knew enough words about the thing that I wanted to ask for. I went in, and there were few people. It was my, per my turn. I asked the lady, Jean Dobry, Shuprosham Pani Ma Yaika? They were all laughing at me, and by that time, I didn't know what was going on. But today, I know it's a little thing. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. I also, I would like to ask you to do me a favor, please. I would like to ask you, please, show more understanding to the refugees here. They are just normal people like you. They are looking for help, for a better life not for your money. Just remember, a good attitude and a nice smile can make a good change in our life. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Watch. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Kased <laughs> Nabashi. Um, we could ask all sorts of very difficult questions and talk about things that would stir up emotions, um, not just here, but in people who, who watch this, uh, and talk about the uh, well-meaning barbarity of regimes and the reasons why it is that people do such insane things to other people while believing that they're doing the right thing, but we won't. Um, because that would just take forever. So instead, um, this is um, um, a piece of information for you guys. We have trees out there. Compliments of our sponsors. So be duly grateful and uh, pick one up on, uh, on, on the way out. And the first one, if I may, is for you. Thank you so much. So you may uh, maybe set down some roots here or wherever you choose to. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.